You've had two multi-platinum albums, 27 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 list, and brought electricity to 600 million Africans through your Solar Power initiative. And to top things off, you totally understand crypto and have a vision for how it can be used to transform an entire continent. So what do you do next? Well, if your name is Akon, you kick off this next initiative by developing your own cryptocurrency and building a crypto city in Senegal. Today, we welcome legendary rap artist Akon to the show to discuss these ambitious initiatives. Akon is joined by John Karras, the CEO of Acoin. There's no diggity to bag up, but there's a whole lot of visionary thinking as we engage with this unstoppable force. Smack this, smack that. Just don't smack us as we invite you to episode number 404 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three. Who's bad? Welcome to the Bad Crypto Podcast. I'm Joel Com. That's Travis Wright, and this is episode number four oh four. Which is strange because you'd think that if it was episode four oh four, it would be podcast not found. Yeah, but we found it. We found it. We yeah. searched. You, there's no error in this one. There is no, well, I don't you know. Go to might... badco.in forward slash 404. <laughs> There'll actually be something there. They, they, that's going to be really weird. People are going to be like, that is bad. That's so bad. <laughs> oh, well, we <laughs> have a absolutely great show for you today as we had the opportunity to interview Akon while he was on the road. <laughs> He was driving. I'm not a big fan of distracted driving, but, you know, what are you going to do? Tell Akon he can't drive in podcast? Well, he, apparently he says he loves to drive around because that's when he thinks the best. So he's driving around and he had the video. He had his camera like on a on a stand. You could see I, I guarantee you this was not the first time that he's been driving around and doing a, doing interviews or talking to people on the phone. It seems like it's probably his thing. That's his that's his M.O. And our M.O. is to first tell you about our show sponsor. In this case, it's eToro. They offer a wide variety of cryptocurrencies for trading, and you could build a diversified portfolio with 14 of the most popular coins. They've got some really cool features, including one I've not seen anywhere else, the copy trader functionality where you can automatically copy trades of top crypto traders on eToro. You follow the smart money, zero in commission trading fees, social trading, instantly know your profit and loss by total portfolio or individual assets. And for a limited time, if you are a new eToro customer in these United States of America, sorry for our friends elsewhere, uh, we have a special offer for you. You can get $50 in free Bitcoin. It's easy to do. Just follow the instructions. You must go to this link, badco.in forward slash eToro, $50 in free Bitcoin from the Bad Crypto Podcast while supplies last, badco.in forward slash eToro. Now, this interview right here, folks, you're going to love this. And then notice how... We just really crack up Akon. Like we have him laughing so much during this. I think we're now BFFs. Yeah. Well, you know, he was actually scheduled to participate in virtual blockchain week. And the dude is just hard to get on a call. You know, they were trying the best they could. He's super busy. And so uh, that didn't happen. But this interview did. And so let's go to the tape. You know, sometimes you get in the bubble and you think that Bitcoin is just a Western world thing and crypto is, you know, just about the price of crypto. But that's not true. Blockchain is revolutionizing the way that we are going to transact and contract all over the world. Seriously disruptive. And you've heard us reference a project that's taking place in Africa a number of times. The project is called a coin, and it is the creation of the rapper Akon. You've heard of him before, yeah? Big, big chart topper. And uh, we have Akon with us today, along with John Karras. They are the co founders of A Coin. Gentlemen, welcome to Bad Crypto. Awesome. Man, Thank you. Absolutely. I want to see if I can uh, nail your your full name, Akon. Okay, don't don't tell me until I've said it. 
Um, let me see if I pronounce this right. Alume Damala Badara Akon Tiam. How did they do? <laughs> you was almost right with everything except the first name is with an M, not an M as a mom. Ah, you know that on Wikipedia it's got an M. But you did great. You did great. You got you actually the closest. <laughs> mm, thank you. Very nicely done, Mr. Jokam. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to do the dance. Well, you know, first of all, congratulations on uh, on your success as a singer, a songwriter, a producer. Uh, you oh, know, thank you, man. That that's awesome. What really fascinates me though is how you're taking that success and you want to have a massive impact on not just you know your city, not just your fans, not a whole continent, right? You want to revolutionize the the way that um, transactions are handled. So where where did the idea for this come from? Well, you know, the idea came a while ago um, to actually really fulfill it. I mean, I was introduced to. The crypto world early, like early, shortly after the Olympics in South Africa, you know, around 2010, 11 or something like that. Um, but ultimately, when I went to Africa, you know, I used, I used to go there frequently doing the stuff with my solar projects and my energy company there. But when I had money and I would, you know, actually go back through, you know, France to, you know, connect to maybe going to the U.S., there was a time where I was trying to take my uh, CFI, which is the uh, money that France made for Senegal trade with and I was trying to trade that for Euro. And as I got to the trading booth to trade the money in, they was like, oh, I'm sorry, we don't take that. I said, what do you mean? I just want to trade it over for some Euro. They said, well, we don't take CFI in France. I said, well, you guys made this money for us in Africa. You mean to tell me the money that you've made for us is not worth anything in France? So I can't trade that for Euro? They was like, no, unfortunately. And I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. So we have to have our own currency that actually has some kind of value that we can trade outside of the United States. And when the con conversation of, you know, um, Bitcoin and crypto and all this was coming about, at that moment, a big light bulb blinked, and I was like, this is going to be the solution for Africa for sure. You know, it's, it, it is. It's really interesting. I mean, that when we were having some conversation with some folks that have been to different countries all around the world and talking about how certain people are using crypto. I guess my right. question, I guess my question would be, what about the folks that don't have phones or maybe they have blackouts and they don't have electricity or they can't charge their device or they don't have a smartphone? Like how, how is, how is a coin going to work in a, in a situation like that? Well, the beautiful part about it is there's no one in Africa that doesn't have a cell phone. We got over 1.4 billion people in Africa and most of them have two full, two cell phones more, which is mm. crazy because even now, majority of their stuff is actually based on the cell phone transactions all the way down to paying their bills and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the beauty of it. You know, but ultimately... It's like I the think, T9 type of phones though, right? The T9? There, right. there, are, um, there are right now about 450 million smartphones. And by the end of next year, by the end of 2021, they say it'll be over 600 million smartphones uh, across Africa. Uh, one of the great things that Acon's done with Acon Lighting Africa is, has brought... Uh, solar lighting to 18 countries and over 400 different uh, projects that were put in through requests for proposals. And that just continues to expand out. So people have access to power for charging. Um, and, and that's a, a big, you know, a big issue that's been in the process of being solved. But again, 600 million people uh, mm -hmm. get you a lot of reach. That's, uh, that's pushing up on a huge percentage of the, the population in sub-Saharan Africa. That is huge. John, you've been in the entertainment industry and the finance industries for a very long time. You've been with William Morris. And so I'm assuming that uh, you've known Akon for a while. And this uh, did he share the, you know, the problem with you? And you're like, oh, we should solve that. How did that happen? Uh, some years. So Akon and I have been working together for a bunch of years. We're partners in a whole number of ventures, but this is absolutely his dream and vision. Uh, we have a, a mutual friend and an old friend of, of Akon's in, in Brock Pierce, who's uh, inspired him about the possibilities of blockchain and, and pulled him into some different things through the years. Um, but Akon came to me and said, we've got to figure out how to build something that can do X, Y, and Z. And then uh, I went off and found Lynn Liss, our co-founder and COO. And together, the three of us have gone off and built an amazing world-class core team that will uh, will grow and expand as we come through our, our launch and our token generation event, which is upcoming. Um, but this is completely Akon's vision. And, and we ran with that and found that the, the real opportunity as a, 
a last mile solution to essentially supercharge prepaid cell minutes, which are a store of value across Africa. And people are currently using them for all kinds of transactions. So we've teamed up with one of our partners in BitMinutes and, uh, and, and Stellar, and we're an, an anchor uh, solution on the Stellar network to come up with a way to, again, supercharge those prepaid cell minutes and have them become instantly convertible through a, an internal conversion mechanism so they can move from fiat currencies like dollar, euro, pound, RMB, to prepaid cell minutes to a bunch of cryptocurrencies. So supercharging those cell minutes allows us to help bank the unbanked and make those, those prepaid cell minutes something that many, many, many people in Africa use, have more power for transactions. But that's Akon's yeah. vision. That's his idea. This we he said this is what I want to do, and we have to figure out how to do it. So, you know, he's the visionary behind this. We just implement. Right. So, so to add on to that, um, in case some of those some people got lost in the process, basically in Africa, as you know, a lot of the currencies are very untrusted, and a lot of them are very unstable. They continue to go up and down, and there's not no real stability. So the the, the people and the locals a lot of times are using cell phone minutes to purchase things. In other words, they will go to the market to buy fish or vegetables or fruit. And instead of giving them actual fiat currency, they would actually trade cell phone minutes as value for that fruit or whatever the case may be. So cell phone minutes became actually a currency trade, I mean, a trading mechanism for, you know, the people there. So we created what you call the atomic swap under the ACOIN platform that allows you to take your existing cell phone minutes and turn that into ACOIN to utilize ACOIN as a trading mechanism for you. Yeah, that's that's amazing, and and the ability that you're you're doing is to creating a city. So you're working with with Senegal, and they gave you two thousand acres of land. And I'm sitting there looking at the map, and it's it's near Dakar, right? And it's on this little peninsula on the westernmost part of Africa. That looks like amazing prime land. It would seem like there might be some beaches there or something, just because the the right locations the, the locations right on, right on just on the looks beach. amazing, like. I think I, w- I want to move. Is there any way I can help me? I want to be a citizen. Is this possible? <laughs> it's going crazy here in America. <laughs> I did have to pay the to pay for. What he's sharing is that unfortunately they didn't give him the land. He had to buy it. I had to buy the land. Part, nice, of the, yeah. part of the part of the the team that's building out Acon City is uh, uh, the Acon initially, and then uh, the financiers will help to uh, to uh, defray those expenses as as the rest of the land purchase price is paid as things are built on it. But it is an amazing world-class uh, crypto powered forward thinking city of the future. And there's some bigger announcements coming on that in the coming weeks. Cool deal. So, yeah. So, so tell us, tell us a bit about Acon city. We had John here telling us a little bit about it. Uh, it looks like it's just prime real estate you got right there on the beach. And also again, Joel, when we were talking ahead of time, he goes, what? He wasn't born in he wasn't born in Senegal. It says here on Wikipedia he was born in St. Louis. And it's like St. Louis, Senegal. Uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and raised in Senegal. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, see but, there, I, Travis? but I did see there's St. Louis right there in Senegal. I was right, was right yes. north of, there, uh, there's, there's actually a St. Louis in Senegal where half my life I was there, right next to uh, um, Kaulak. So it was ironic that I was born in St. Louis in Missouri, but then raised in St. Louis in Senegal. Isn't that, ah, that is crazy, funny. Right? Travis is in Missouri. <laughs> he's like, he's uh, outside of Kansas City. Yep. Oh, okay. Nice. So you're not far. Not too far. <laughs> yeah, and you guys are close yeah, to the mom. same age, I think, right? Travis, how old are you? I turned 47 this year. Yeah, he's... Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I, I turned 20 young. <laughs> that's good now i'm pretty sure akon that you turn uh, 47 in just a few days here yeah i'm, I'm right around the corner baby man, happy excellent. birthday good sir absolutely yeah, man. My so big brother. <laughs> i want to talk a little bit about the coin itself and how you know what it, what's the coin going to be used for and then how are they going to get distributed uh one of the real keys is it is again um, a digital payment solution, uh, supercharging those prepaid cell minutes, that internal atomic swap slash conversion mechanism that's proprietary. Uh, so it's the fees. Users. It's it's the fees that it's being used for. Well, it's it's less about the fees. Our mission really is to uh, is to empower the users and all that. The real core of the business is our uh, DAP store, as it were, our our 
decentralized app platform built into our wallet. Uh, and so our real belief is there are all kinds of amazing uh, crypto solutions out there, blockchain solutions out there that users need to find across Africa, India, rising economies. And, um, and so we are you know, serving as a hub to present those to people and, and to help those, uh, those solutions rise. That's, that's really more of the business aspect of our, our business. The token is really meant to be purely a utility coin to be a digital payment solution to supercharge those prepaid sell minutes that frequently use store of value that Akon was just describing. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's, it's going to be solar powered, right? There's a lot of, a lot of sunlight in Africa. It seems like the, the probably the best sort of energy source would be solar. So that's very intuitive to have that. It looks like that the whole city will be solar powered. How, how does one even begin to build the infrastructure of a brand new city? It just seems like from scratch, like, that's got to be a daunting task. Like, how have you guys gone about the the planning and the execution of launching a city? That's just so daunting. It's right. Like. Now it's, it's actually very fun. I'm learning a lot in the process of it. You know, the, obviously the first big step is really you know designing the city as to what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, what the main purpose of the city is, and you know ultimately how it all comes together. And then from there, you just slowly find each partner in every one of those sectors that the best of what they do and bring them on board. And that's what I've been pretty much doing. We got a consultancy company that we just teamed up with that's bringing aboard all the necessity, you know, necessary uh, businesses and companies and, you know, uh, contracts that we'll be need to close out. So they're handing a lot of that stuff for us as far as bringing in the right partners that's going to be able to make the city start from zero all the way up to completion. They help to bring the financing, the construction teams and some of the subcontractors right. and all of that. Fantastic group. Yeah, I was going to say, man, it's going to be expensive to be like, to like all the buildings and all the, you know, the plumbing oh, yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, that's just, that's got to be billions. billions and billions yeah. and billions of dollars. I was like, billions. man, you must have sold more records than I thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a seven billion dollar project. It's estimated to be a seven billion dollar project right now. It may oh. increase, it may not. It all depends on the technology and how it grows. I love that you're building this on Stellar. We just interviewed Jed McCaleb for the second time, and we've been big fans of Stellar and and how fa- how fast that uh, yeah, that blockchain. Yeah, and you're doing a lot of things with this project. It's not just the token; it's the the oh. DAP marketplace. It's Atomic yes. Swaps. It's the Acon City, and I'm thinking this is just what you've got on the roadmap here. I can't even imagine what else right. you might be dreaming up for the long term. Oh man, we have some we big announcements. announcements. Yep, right. Some big announcements. <laughs> Can you give us a tease? Tease us a little bit here for our audience. I kind of, I, I kind of want to, but unfortunately, we got gag orders around yeah. everyone just because we have to keep the information locked in up until the point where everything is ready to go. But I promise you, when it's time to start announcing these things, we will be reaching out. I, I have, I have kind of a funny question here, just because I'm a joker. <laughs> so, so I noticed I, I was reading an article that said that you have seven wives. How, how do you handle all all that all, all of them wish. bitching at you at the same time? Dude, listen, I <laughs> wish I had those many wives, but guess what? If if if, if that if they they do say whatever you put on the air eventually will one day come true, so I just go along with it and hope it one day come true. <laughs> oh, I know. I was gonna say if that's part of the deal, I'm definitely moving to Acon City. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I'm gonna not put my foot in it right here. I'm just gonna leave that. <laughs> Sorry, wise. I'm gonna right. leave that sit right there where it is, and because uh, I know some people wouldn't no. be happy if I. No, it's so funny, Joel. Before the show, he said, like, "I don't know if you should ask him that. He might get mad at us, and he might. We may not want to work with us at oh, all." And I'm, I'm like, "Oh no, he's no snowflake. He's gonna laugh about that." I'm just. <laughs> Then you got to figure out which one am I going to sing smack that to? <laughs> <laughs> no, you got all of them. It's either line them up. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to retitle right. the song and call it smack that and that and that and that. And that and that one. <laughs> Just go Julie, smack get over here. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julie, you've got uh, this. 
this vision here, uh, there's an article that dates back a few years in from 2013 with CNN. And, and you said, you want to make the biggest impact in Africa. If I could have my way, Africa would be the United States of Africa. So there's something there in that vision that you have. I mean, would you ever consider running for office? Um, you know, if, of course, in the beginning, I always said to myself that I would never run for president. But I know as I get a lot older, get a lot wiser, um, and sit still, there's going to be a lot of changes that I'm, I'm going to want to make. And I know to be in office may be the only way to make it. So I'm not discounting, you know, running in the future, perhaps. But I mean, as of right now, I, you know, my, own, my main focus is to get the city up and going, build some, you know, some real equity into Africa and give people a real, you know, place to live and a, you know, safer, you know, more transparent world to be in a, be a part of. And then from there, we'll see where everything goes. But I can definitely see myself going into politics to make some real changes eventually. Well, I, my next question was more serious. I like to mix it up, a little joke and then a little serious coming at you. So, <laughs> so w- one of the things, one of the things that I was really curious about with this and how you're setting this up is, is that, so, you know, Africa is, you know, it's had some economic problems over the time. And one of the, one of the countries that I thought that had been doing it pretty well was Libya. Libya had sort of a version of socialism in place where they would provide, you know, Gaddafi provided everyone with, I think, on electricity, free, uh, 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 inter, you know, a, a university and all this other stuff. And and he was setting up, he was working with some other countries and they were going to set up a an African currency backed by gold. And then shortly thereafter, we know what happened to Libya. And so I, right. it's, it, it's concerning when when people are out there trying to, you know, make a solid impact in some ways, it, it puts a target on on you. Now, and especially if you're going to dive too deep into politics, so I would, for one, I, w- I would, I would caution you to be careful on some of that stuff there. But what is your, right. what are your, what is your sort of long, maybe your the long term, you know, vision for Africa? Is it are you, you know, planning on working with some of these other countries? And and I know you're already doing that with your solar power, so you're already having a huge impact in in Africa in a lot of ways. So maybe you know, what is the next, what does the next few steps look like after the city's done? Oh, I mean, that's, that's, that's my life goal is to franchise the city all throughout Africa, you know, go to every country and put an Akon city there so that way all the cities can be interconnected and be able to communicate with each other, or, you know, create opportunities from entertainment to education to healthcare to everything in these cities. So that way, no matter how or what's going on within those cities, there's a safe ground that people can go to to live a really normal life and expand from there to go out. You know, ultimately, I think you know, what you say does make a lot of sense. You know, whenever you're trying to do something great, you're always going to be a target. But ultimately, the way I see it, nothing great comes without sacrifice or consequence. Even when you look at all the prophets, all the way down to Jesus, he was crucified for trying to do the thing, the right thing. So I think that comes with making change. You got to be fearless and just walk in God's way and whatever happens is God's will. But at the end of the day, I'll try to do as much as I possibly can to make people or put people in a better comfortable position to live in a, a better way. So that way my name is just not in vain and I'm not known for singing and dancing when it's all over. That's a beautiful vision. And, and we, uh, we appreciate that. Hey, uh, John, what do people know? Uh, what do they need to know to get involved? Is there going to be a, an IEO going on or how do people play? <clears throat> well, uh, in the next uh, number of weeks, we're going to start talking about a token generation event. It'll be announced uh, literally in the next several weeks. Uh, we will be doing something with the top three exchange, uh, which will be the first of several. Um, and then there are some uh, some big utilization cases that are about to be announced and geared up. Uh, we have some unbelievable partners for these things. We are initially focused on Africa, as you said. And so there will be a whole bunch of things for people to see and hear. Uh, there's an event on Akon's birthday next Thursday called Blockdown 2020. We'll be making some announcements yeah. then next Thursday, um, some big ones. And then on Friday is Miami DevCon, all happening virtually. We've got some other stuff going on there about Acon City and some of the uh, some of the stuff that's that's coming down the pike. So there'll be a lot of press. We look forward to coming back and talking to you guys and, uh, you know, appreciate you know, the opportunities to start getting the word out uh, through bad crypto. 
That's awesome. The website is a coin, a K O I N dot I O. And if I may, Akon, can I play a, a quick <clears throat> speed round with you here? Absolutely. I just uh, like, I'm, I want to say a few names of people that, uh, you know, you may have worked with and just, you know, share whatever you want to share about them. All right. So no Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Uncle Snoop. <laughs> That's my dog. That's my dog right there, man. Super humble, down to earth, you know, all, always been positive and always lended a hand where he could. He's someone I can say number number great things about for sure. Michael Jackson. Oh, man, legend. I mean, that's another person that I wish that people could have seen him in the light in which I've seen him because with his name is so much stigma and it's so much that you think about when you think Michael Jackson. And no one knows that half the things that you might have thought about him was all false, even from the standpoint of who he was as a person because he had two personalities, one when he stepped out that door in the, in the, in the most loving, fun extremely like just generous person behind closed doors like he was super sensitive and just loved people you know and I've, i really wanted people to see that side you know outside of all the controversy that was attached to someone that didn't deserve none of that stuff mm. the beautiful whitney houston oh man that's another one of my girls now whitney me and her had an ex- we had a ball like whitney was someone that actually surprised me because she's kind of totally a little bit different whereas you know she, she there was a big Thing, it's like the way they seen her was totally different from what she like. She's just super fun. Like Bobby, super Bobby, Bra- Bobby Brown brought that out of her, I guess, huh? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think she might have been the one that made Bobby bad. You know? Uh-oh. Oh no! <laughs> nice. No, but in a good way, though. In a good, in a good way, though. Like mm. she was you know, obviously a very strong black woman, but super fun. You know, she spoke her mind, but she she just never like she she was very unapologetic. She just wanted to have fun and enjoy life as it was. And I think people might have translated that differently. You know. Mm. Just one more, and I, and I think I know what you're going to say because all the interviews I've seen with him seem like he's just an amazing human being. Lionel Richie. Oh, no, listen, Lionel, that right there, I call him the storyteller. Lionel is so amazing, but just being around Lionel and the stories that he tells teaches you so much about history, the music business, Motown, him, even you, like you see, <laughs> but he's just an amazing guy, man. I don't, I don't think there's anyone that's ever met Lionel that can tell you anything negative about that guy. He's yeah, amazing. that guy doesn't age. I think he might be a vampire. No, like he's, he's Benjamin Button for sure. Like uh, it's, it's crazy. Benjamin Lionel right there. Yeah, that's crazy. Hey, I want to ask. I want to ask one thing about Acon, Acon City because. You're going to be here on, you're going to be near the beach. You got, it's all this property right there. So you're going to be building like your own sort of South beach, maybe West beach there. That's just, the clubs are just going to be ridiculous. I can just imagine. Now, now listen, Akon City, listen, you won't believe me. I, like I, you got to understand my core. I'm an entertainer first before anything. Yeah. So there's no way you're going to come to my city and not be entertained. That's, oh yeah. That's you're like, going to have a Super Bowl there. Speaking on that part, that's, that's almost a given. Believe yeah, yeah. No, I just was, I could envision it already. That's why I was like, dang, I need, oh to get, I need a passport. Right, you gotta have one. Gotta when uh, one. we were in uh, Florida on South Beach for Miami uh, Blockchain Week before the lockdown happened, and we got to hang out at Pitbull's place. I know that he's one of your homies too, and uh, got to yeah his his club there. Anyhow, we know you got a lot going on, John and, and Akon. Thanks so much for joining us today. We wish you the absolute best with your project and your big visions for uh, nah, for bringing you, crypto and a new digital economy to Africa. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks for having and us. Oh, and, speak, and speaking of Pitt, by the way, me and Pitt, we got our new single that's out right now called Tiquero Mod. We just shot. We're already at 3 million views on YouTube. We just dropped oh, it nice. on Friday. So, yeah, take a look at it, guys. I think you guys will enjoy it. Congratulations. Great chatting yeah. with you. Yeah. No, absolutely, man. <laughs> I'll tell you, Travis, I did listen to some of his music before we did this interview. And I'm like, really? This is. This is what's so popular. Okay, you know, maybe I'm just hey, I'm just an old curmudgeon. Get up, buddy. I'm not going to smack that ass. I do yeah. that. But here's the thing. I mean, when you talk to the guy and see what he's doing, I don't care what music he's putting out there. He is a world changer. Oh, no doubt. And what was very nice about it is like, he knew. He goes, look, I don't want to be just a song and dance man. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm here to help out the world. So I love that about it. That was a great attitude. And uh, he's doing some amazing things out there. And when that city is all built, you know what? 
I want to go check it out. That would be awesome. I've never actually been to Africa at all yet. I've not, I've not stepped on that continent. That's one of the places I've not been. No, me either. Now, my, you know, when we think of Africa, you typically don't think of Middle East, but of course, Egypt is, you know, an African country right there in the northeast I've not corner. Been there either. I'd love to go there and see those. Those. Oh yeah, the pyramids. pyramids. Right, for sure. Speaking of which, I just want to throw this out there because I saw an amazing documentary recently called uh, "The Revelations of the Pyramid." And it goes into all this math around the pyramid and like the base of the pyramid, the height of the pyramid. And it, it basically taps into the golden number and pi and all. And then it's situated like it's like a big giant 26,000 year clock, the way that all of Giza is set up. There's just so much astrological amazingness going on, astronomical, astrological madness so you gotta watch it, that it, the mystery is what it is i mean how in the world did they build those things it's it's crazy they, didn't they have... did it the big one in 20 years and that's an impossibility that's like a basically like laying a rock every 12 minutes or something it would have been an impossibility it's you, you watch this thing and you go there's there's like there was they had some sort of anti-gravity thing or something there was something going on that we don't understand or comprehend because how and this they didn't use they they all they did was place the rock on top of the other rock. They'd use no concrete or no. It's just well, amazing. Like I, I, Vessa was actually the dude who recommended me watch this. Uh, the artist, you know, the crypto artist Vessa. We have we've had on the show a few times in episode number one thirty. It, it blew my mind. I've actually watched it twice and then watched it again with my son. Because it's just wouldn't it be funny if like, after all this discovery, they dig down deep and they find that right at the core of this whole thing that was built, there's a Bitcoin there. <laughs> and so because they came from the, they, they came from the future and went into the past. And because Bitcoin dominance is everything, although not today, Mr. Travis, right? Just a, a little banter here about what's happening in the crypto market. Of course, uh, timestamp this for noon mountain time on Sunday, the 10th of May and having happens tomorrow uh very late on the 11th uh, actually after midnight on the 12th if you're in um europe and exactly bitcoin, one day six hours and 17 minutes from now is the latest okay year. there you go well bitcoin crapped the bed um last night it dropped from like 9800 to 8100 in a matter of 15 minutes and i still haven't really done a whole lot of analysis to see what happened it's back up to about 8500 right now but some people are saying manipulation some people saying you know the shorts who really knows crypto goes up crypto goes down um but who knows where it's going to be by the time you guys hear this and in a day and six hours from now by the time the halving happens well the, ex the expectation of that is is like oh the happening's a couple days away oh here we are near ten thousand. you're not thinking it's going to drop 1800 bucks or whatever it did over the course of 15 minutes that's a huge drop and then <laughs> that's the fun about being in this space, folks. You got to pay attention because things change rapidly. You went to the bathroom, yeah. you come back, you just lost $1,800 off of Bitcoin. <laughs> Only if you sold. If you're a hodler, then it's just another day in, uh, in the world of crypto. Mr. Travis Wright, how about a shout out to our other show sponsor? that people should pay attention to and go visit because not only does it support the show, but it introduces you to a great place you should go. Yes. So me social S O M E E dot social blockchain based social media platform built for privacy and user control and content monetization. So me is privacy focused, censorship resistant and provides multiple monetization options, content and curation rewards. I would say it's sort of Facebook-ish, not completely Facebook-ish, but kind of. What would you say, Mr. Jokam? Uh, well, it's definitely social media-ish, and it solves a lot of the problems that we have with social media, you know, being privacy and, mm -hmm. and no censorship and ways for you to make money on it and ways to get rewarded for the content you post and the content you curate. I mean, you don't Way get any of Facebook. that. I've never made any. I've never got made a check from Facebook of you. Uh, no, Facebook has never sent me any money whatsoever. Sure. So, uh, I know, yeah. seriously. So, Travis, I'm really excited about our next show that is coming up Tuesday night post having. It's going to be Don Tapscott. And, of course, uh, Don delivered the closing keynote for, uh, at Virtual Blockchain Week. It was amazing. If you haven't seen this yet, 
go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash bad crypto and find the Don Tapscott video because it, it's, it was baller. But before he what, was it blockchain crypto, state of the union, I think it's called. Yep. Well, that, yeah, that's correct. That is the talk, but we had an opportunity to interview him um, as well and talk about some other things. And that exclusive interview is going to be coming out in episode 405, which was found. Yeah. Great stuff. We appreciate you. I'm sorry I said great stuff. Let me not say Don't it. never apologize for great stuff. It is I think it's stuff. interesting. <laughs> Take a drink. And while you're taking a drink, um, call the Bad Crypto Hotline, 708-885-9030. Just leave us a message. You know, maybe ask a question. Give us your thoughts, your feedback. Tell us to stay bad. We don't actually pick up the phone, at, you know, ourselves. It's a 24-hour hotline that we have a, a robo babe that will welcome you to the, um, the, the call and then leave a message for us. Mm, okay. Stuff. <laughs> Halfway decent stuff. <laughs> we appreciate Definitely. you guys. Thanks for tuning in. We love Stay you as bad. always. Yeah. This next episode is going to be awesome. This episode was awesome. You have 404 amazing episodes full of just amazing, interesting, great stuff. Well, there was one that wasn't really amazing. That's true. There was one that was somewhere average. Decent, average, low average. All right, gang. Stay bad. Go. Yep, you say it. I was okay. thinking it. I did. Stay bad. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.